So kind, join me in the book of St. Matthew. St. Matthew 16. St. Matthew 16, verse 24 through 26. St. Matthew chapter 20, chapter 16, verse 24 through 26. And when you have it, it reads as follows. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Today, the principle we want to take hold of and add to our character arsenal is at all cost. At all cost. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just thank you for today. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for whew, just allowing us to breathe. Just allowing us to see, just allowing us to walk and comprehend, Father God, the very the very things that we take for granted that we have today can be so easily snatched away in a moment. Beyond our power, beyond our control, just circumstance. There were those who, while we slept, left this place, God. While we were comfortable in our beds last night, there were certain people that will never see or never lived or existed to see the break of today, Lord. So we just thank you, Father God, for the things that we so often overlook and take for granted because every breath isn't promised to everyone. It is only by your grace and your mercy mm. that blood continues to run through our veins, Lord. So we're just grateful, Father. We're so grateful, Father. We just can't bless you and thank you enough. And it's appropriate just to take an opportunity once in a, time, a while to step away from the ritual and tradition and say, thank you, God. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Even though my body may not be in perfect shape, I'm glad that it's in good enough shape to worship you. And as long as I have breath, as long as I have the ability to do so, Lord, get the glory out of my life. God, we ask you right now, if there's anything in our lives that's not like you, expose it, reveal it, and remove it. Forgive us for any sin of omission, commission, or poor disposition. Heavenly Father, we pray right now that you open our eyes that we behold the wondrous things within your law and open our ears so that we can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying and open our hearts so that the seed of the word that is sown today finds good ground, Father God, that it gets rooted in us, Lord Jesus Christ, that it springs up and it grows and it blossoms in our lives and it yields fruit unto righteousness that when people see the fruit, they won't see us, Lord, but they will see you, your character and your personality and your power manifest Invested in the deliverance and in the retribution and in the triumphant nature of our life, Lord. Now let me decrease and you increase. Hide me behind the cross and speak through lips of clay. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Father God. These things we pray in the matchless name of our Lord, Savior, Redeemer, and Friend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 At all cost. At all cost. So our focal text today comes from the book of St. Matthew. St. Matthew is one of the four books, as we know, that is one of the Gospels that chronicles the life of Jesus and his works while he was here on earth. Those Gospels being Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The book of Matthew specifically is written from the perspective to prove or convince the reader that Jesus Christ is king, that Christ is indeed the prophesied Messiah of Israel. The credentials of Christ the King are presented all throughout the book of St. Matthew. The book of St. Matthew is primarily addressed to the Jews to prove that Christ is the Messiah. Christ is the Messiah, the one who has come back to rule over 
God's people. And based upon the preponderance of evidence found in the book of Matthew, the life of Christ fulfilled prophecy that would identify who the Messiah was indeed to be. Now our focal text comes from the section of the book of Matthew that deals with the Jews' opposition or rejection of the king. Prior to the section of scripture that we are looking at today, the Pharisees and the Sadducees had begun to come to Christ and question Christ and challenge his theology and his doctrine to see if they could catch him slipping. To, you know, to try to, you know, see if he really was all that the rumors and the people were saying. So there was now religious opposition to the Messiah, the king. These words that Peter is, I'm sorry, these words that Jesus are speaking specifically in our text, they are a response to Simon Peter's statement that he would never allow Christ to fall into the hands of the elders and chief priests to be killed and resurrected. See, Jesus had just told the disciples, listen, there's going to come a day where they're going to come and, you know, arrest me and beat me and torment me and, and kill me. And he even tells them, but in three days later, I will be resurrected. And Peter didn't hear or didn't listen or didn't care to hear the whole message in entirety. All he heard was that they were going to come and take Jesus away and kill him. So 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 you ever you ever have somebody they interrupt you or they stop listening halfway through what you're trying to tell them and you never get to make your point. It seemed like Peter, all Peter heard was they're gonna arrest you and kill. He didn't even, you know, consider that Jesus also said, but three days later, right. I'm gonna get up. Yeah. And Peter got upset. And Peter was like, no, Jesus, we're never going to let that happen. We're never going to. And if he would have if he would have just listened to himself, he would have called him. Jesus, we're never going to let them come arrest you, kill you, and then you raise yourself up from the dead. Yeah, I think if he would have listened to the whole thing, he's like, oh, wait a minute. I missed that part right there. But he was so dead set on being Peter. Being Peter that I got your back, Jesus. Nothing bad's going to happen to you, happen to you as long as I'm around, Peter. Good old Peter. So Jesus first rebukes Peter. He says, get thee behind me, Satan. And then in verse 24, he starts to teach his disciples about the cost. The cost of what it takes to be a disciple of Christ, to follow him. to follow, Because that's what a disciple is. A disciple is someone who follows someone else, who adheres to the teachings and the doctrines of and as believers it is our goal to all become disciples of Christ so that one day we too can make disciples of Christ if anyone would come after me, or as the Amplified translation reads in verse 24, if anyone desires to be my disciple let him deny himself. Deny means to disregard himself, to lose sight of himself, to forget himself, to forget his own interests. That's what it means for someone to deny themselves. Hmm. I did. You know, and 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 so that's where Christ begins telling them the cost mm -hmm. to be a disciple. He said, the first thing you got to do is deny yourself. Mm -hmm. It's so very hard to follow Christ if you have not at first determined to deny yourself. Mm -hmm. It's 100% an issue. When if you desire to truly walk in the newness of salvation, but you are still allowing self to lead and guide you, when you are still allowing the desires of the flesh to influence you, mm -hmm. let's 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 attack this on a level that may be a little easier to embrace, so we can get a tangible 
example of the principle and then apply it spiritually. Amen? When you step into a new relationship, boyfriend or girlfriend, but you bring old behaviors from the past. Be like, like if I was going to be in a relationship with my wife, if when I first met Pastor Janelle, how do you think it would have went over if I kept calling her Susie? Right. <laughs> like, or how would you think she would have felt if we went out on a date and I said, where would you like to go eat? And she was like, oh, I want to go to the smoothie bar. And I would say something like, Susie liked the steakhouse. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What would you like to do on a date, Janelle? Let's go to the movie. Susie liked the amusement park. How hard would it be for me to build a relationship with her when I was always bringing the past relationship into the equation? How long do you think Janelle, Pastor Janelle, would have put up with me talking about Susie all the time? Not long at all. Perhaps maybe, 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 maybe. Let's let's look at another example. Maybe you get a new job. Maybe you get a new job. Let's, let, 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 let's keep it real simple. Maybe you get a new job at um, AT&T. And every time you go in there and they try to tell you how they want you to do something, you say, well, that's not how we did it at T-Mobile. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> how long do you think yeah. you do you think you will be successful at AT&T telling them, well, Metro PC don't do it that way? Right, right. When you bring past relationship principles and you, it, it, it hurts the new relationship. Yeah. It makes it impossible for the new that you are trying to embrace and cultivate and accept. It makes it very, very difficult. Yeah. It's always going to be a struggle to succeed in anything moving forward when you insist on including choices, behaviors, and principles that failed you in the past. Mm. That relationship with Susie failed in the past for a reason. Right. So why would you keep bringing them into yeah, your future right. relationship? Yeah. What you were doing at T-Mobile and at Metro PC, it failed you. That's why you're working at AT&T now. Right. Why are you continuing to try and bring those failed practices into something new, something that didn't work there. Don't mean. It's like trying to drive a car with the parking brake engaged. Wow. If you drive a car, mm -hmm. but you accidentally forget to release the parking brake, it'll still move. Yeah. But you'll have to give it a lot of gas and you'll hear the brakes grinding and the car will move very slow. And you'll still move, but the reality is you're going to be doing damage to the vehicle in the process of trying to force it to go forward. So when you are trying to go forward, you're going to do damage to the new because you refuse to deny. You refuse to let go of. You refuse to release the past. Are y'all with me so far? Yes. The Apostle Paul reiterates this principle in Hebrews 12, 1, saying, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with such great a cloud of witnesses. This is the part right here, comma. Let us lay aside every weight. Yes. <laughs> Let us lay aside every weight, not just some of the weights. Let us, hey, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so doeth easily be. Let us, let us lay aside every weight. Every friend that wants to hold us back, every family member, every habit, every place that, let us aside every weight. Just you, you, okay, you cut that person off, but you still picked up that habit. Lay aside every weight. Okay, you laid aside the habit and you laid aside the friend, but you still got an attitude. Every weight. Lay aside every weight and sin which doeth so easily beset us and let us run with patience. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
the race that is set before us. I want you to know today that worldly wisdom is a weight. Carnal wisdom is a weight when you're trying to become spiritually inclined to do the right thing. I want you to understand that what worldly wants are a weight. Money, power, fame, they can be burdens if you pursue them over pursuing Christ. They will slow you down if you're so concerned about what people think about you. They will slow you down if you're so, so concerned about how much money you don't have and how you're going to get it. They will slow you. They will weight you down because you are focused on the wrong thing. Wanting the worst for others is a weight. When you step into the newness of life and all the people that are hurt you, you're still waiting for God to recompense, to avenge you. That's a weight. They're weights because they take your eyes off the intended target, which is the will of the Father. He's so worried about why that person ain't died yet. Yeah, I'm just going to go right there. I can't stand them. I wish they was just dead. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to myself right now. I'm not talking about anybody else. I'm preaching to people that just hurt you so bad, just did you so dirty. That you can't stand to look at their face, you can't stand to hear their voice. They just disgust you in every way. And now you're trying to get your life right with God. You even got cleaned up, you committed to you, and you still got to see their face. Mm. That's a weight. That's a weight. You got to let that thing go. Because the moment you start looking at that thing, you have taken your eyes off of God. Off of his will. And I don't care how important or how substantial or how relevant you think your opinion, you think your feelings, you think your ideals, and you think your desires are. If they are your ideals and they're your opinions and they're your feelings and they are not God's, you need to drop it at all costs. Yes. Because it's not worth what you stand to lose in the long run. Mm -hmm. Holding on to that pain, it's not worth. What you stand to lose in the long run. That pursuit of fame and personal glory, it ain't worth you better drop it at all costs. Deny yourself. The text says deny yourself. And then after denying yourself, the text through Christ tells us to take up our cross and follow him. So we have to take something up after we put something down. We have to take something up after we put something down. That's heavy, right? That's heavy. And, and, and there's a pun intended because imagine trying to carry the cross of discipleship without putting down the weights of the world. Imagine how, 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 how are your kingdom hands full of carnal stuff? How, 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 how are hands that God has given you that you have allocated to do the will of the Father going to function effectively when you're still carrying around unforgiveness and hatred and hands full of carnal stuff and you and, and, but you got a cross that you got to carry. Mm. How can you carry the cross with revenge in your hands? Wow. Pick up your cross. It's funny because picking up your cross often looks like denying yourself. <laughs> Deny yourself and pick up your cross. Denying yourself, not being petty, maybe picking up your cross. You may want to be petty. Right. You, want, you may want to be small. That may be your cross. I can't be petty anymore. I have to be Christ-like. Mm. Not lying may be picking up your cross. Mm. Ooh, the Bible says liars will have their place in the pit of hell. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. Hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So not lying may be picking up your cross. Forgiving others who did you slimy. Mm. Forgiving others who did you dirty. You may be picking up your cross. I was listening to um, some teaching this weekend. I can't remember the person who said it, but they get the credit for it. And glory, it's not my home. They said simply, forgiving others is the gift you give yourself. Mm -hmm. 
It's the gift that you give yourself because you know without a doubt that you did what God requires you to do. If they receive the forgiveness, if they abuse the forgiveness, if they reject the forgiveness, that ain't your problem. That ain't your problem. Forgiving someone sets you free. It doesn't liberate the other person. Because God is not mocked. Listen, everything that you do, there is an action for it. There is a there is a response from God for it. Everything you do. But when you forgive them, you say, you know what? It's in God's hands now. For real, for real. For real, for real. And let me also just throw this in for those of you who have a hard time dealing with forgiving other people. Let me explain something to you. God knows the whole story. He knows the part that you know and that you dealt with. He also knows that person's motive, that person's agenda hidden, their sincerity, whatever they was going through. He knows it all. And he's the only one who can properly allocate a just punishment. Yes. So as bad as somebody might have did you, as awful as they might have treated you, it may have been worse than you even thought. You might let them off too easy. You got to trust God yeah. that God is going to be just. Now God is a good God. He gives grace and He gives mercy. And I want to um, I just want to warn because I've seen this going around a lot. And I just want to warn people: don't get like Noah. Sorry, don't get like Jonah. Don't become like Jonah because you know how God is. Mm -hmm. That God is faithful and just to forgive people if they truly repent. Don't get like Jonah and not want God to show grace and mercy on your enemies because you know that's the type of God he is. Because even the Ninevites that Jonah wound up inside of the belly of a well for because he knew that God would forgive them if he brought the word. And God did. Even the Ninevites in due season returned back to their wicked ways and God had to destroy them. Right. So they had a season mm -hmm. of grace. Oh my God. They had a season of grace. But because they truly hadn't changed in their heart. They went back to their old ways after the prophet was gone. And God punished them at a later time. Yeah. But don't you be a part of the equation because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm helping somebody out yeah. here. Forgiving others who did you dirty That may be picking up your cross And there's a host of other things That we should carry mm -hmm. That we tend Not to pick up Like love for your enemies Oh That's your cross you gotta carry Temperance for the wicked Oh yeah Temperance for the wicked That's a cross that we have to carry Patience for the stubborn that's a cross that we have to carry. Mercy for the ruthless. Imagine if God hadn't showed the Apostle Paul mercy when he was yet Saul persecuting the disciples with the letters in his hands of execution for anyone who was going around talking that stuff that Jesus was the Messiah and he rose from. But Paul was ruthless. Stood there, the coat check boy, when they were stoning Stephen. It said that he held their coats while they picked up rocks and threw them at the man of God. Mm. Jesus. Mm. And it said as they were killing Stephen, as they were stoning him, that the heavens opened up and God received them. Mm. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Mm. But in the meantime, and Stephen was in the act of forgiving them while they did it. See, Stephen forgiving them was for him. It was a gift that he was given. It did not, it did not eliminate or alleviate the people that were persecuting him and stoning him, mm -hmm. but it set Stephen free. Yeah. <sighs> Gotta have mercy for the ruthless and righteous responses to intentional ignorance. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get y'all some heavy things that we gotta pick up. You can't cut somebody out just because they ignorant. Hmm. You have to give them a righteous response. You have to show them. That's how God gets the glory, for real, for real. That's God getting the glory. When people get God, when you want to give them you. 
denying yourself, <laughs> picking up your cross and doing what Jesus tells us to do. The cross we carry is the commandments and the character of Christ. You can't follow Christ where he is going, carrying the cargo that he was crucified for you to catapult. Mm -hmm. Did y'all get that? Mm -hmm. Did y'all get that? He died so we could jettison jealousy. Mm -hmm. He died so that we could evict envy. Mm -hmm. Jesus died so that we could drop depression. He died so that we could toss our transgressions into the trash. So once again, it doesn't matter how your value system weights the things you're leaving versus what God is telling you to carry. It is imperative to lift and love what the Lord tells us to load at all costs. If he tells you you need to pack up some love, some patience, and some long-suffering, then you have to pack that up. And if that means that you have to unpack jealousy and you have to unpack hatred to make room for love and to make room for compassion, then that's what the Lord says do. That's what God requires. And that's what we have to do if we're going to be disciples of Christ. And if we're going to follow Jesus, we have to dump all that stuff at all costs. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross. Follow Christ. And here comes the reason why. Verse 26 reads of our text. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? And I mean, I just, just lose your soul. Hmm. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul. Don't you understand the denying of yourself and the picking up the cross and following Christ? You have to understand that your soul is on the line. Your soul is on the line. This is, and I had to, I had, I had to dig into it because I wanted to be biblically and principally and theologically sound, just in case someone listens to this and said he was way off with this whole soul thing. But is there any comparison? The moment of this, just, just, just think about that. Is there any comparison? For a moment of ecstasy in this life to forfeit eternal bliss mm. with the Father because you don't know the value of your soul. Wow. You don't know the value of your soul. When we don't know Christ, mm -hmm. before coming into a relationship with Jesus, you had no revelation as to who the Heavenly Father was. Right. Because Jesus was the physical representation of God. God the Father. So if you don't know Jesus, you can't know God. Right, right, you can, right. That's what, listen, point blank. I, time to get in trouble. Every relationship that doesn't accept Jesus, believes you're God, they off. Because you can't know God without knowing Jesus. Right, Jesus right, came right. to show us the glory, the character, the personality, the expectation of God. Jesus told the disciple, if you've seen me, you've right. seen the Father. That's right, right. And when we have no revelation as to who the Heavenly Father is, we make our decision as though this life is all we have. This life is all we have. It was saying a couple years ago, YOLO, you only live once. It, but but every, every decision that we made was based on what can I do in this life before I die? Because he had no revelation of the eternal Father. No revelation of who he was. So they didn't care about that all they cared about was the here and now but the reality is that this life according to james 4 14 that this life is but a vapor is but a vapor however what we do with this life is what determines our eternal state i don't know the value of your soul y'all have to know the value of your soul this life is but a vapor <laughs> In comparison to eternity, I don't care if you live to be three or 333. That's. <laughs> and understand that no amount of worldly power, no amount of worldly prestige, no amount of money, no amount of fame, no amount of accomplishments can purchase you access to God's kingdom 
or keep you from being eternally separated from him. Did y'all get that? Doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter how much money, how much fame, and how much power you gather up here. Right, right. You can't purchase an access pass to God's kingdom with it. Mm -hmm. And it can't stop you from being separated from him. Lord, I was a billionaire. You can't cast me aside. <laughs> Lord. I was the most popular person. Hmm. You got to take me. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> got to know the value of your soul. Mm -hmm. What is the soul? Mm -hmm. What have you really gained by winning the world if you lose your soul? Mm -hmm. So, what have you really sacrificed to possess the riches of the world? Is it worth your soul? So, the Hebrew word for soul in the Bible is nefesh. If you want to write it down, it's capital N as in Nancy. Capital N as in Nancy. E, P as in Paul, H, E, S as in Sam, H, nefesh. And that's a Hebrew word that they use in the Bible to say soul. And what it translates into is it translates for a living being or creature. It goes on to be translated as life that animates the body, emotions, attitude, thoughts, and feelings. Slow it down. Let you think for a second. Let you write. Because I know y'all are taking good notes. Being or creature. Life that animates the body. Emotions. Attitude. Thoughts or feeling. I think so long that people thought soul was this spooky. Um, essence type of. But, but life is a creature. Watch this. The creature habits and the creature emotions and the attitude and the thoughts of those. Let that sink in for a minute. Let it sink in for a minute. We're doing good. We got, we're making good time. Amen. How often do you consider how your options, your options, carnal options, kingdom options? How often do you consider how carnal options or kick? Because we all have options. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We all have. You, you always have carnal options because we're moral beings with free will. God has created us all to have free will. So you always have. You always have the option. Ooh, Jesus. I don't. I said you. You have the option to backslide. Should you mm. take that option? No, but no. no one's stopping you. The only one that's stopping you is you. Amen. Stop praying, Holy Spirit, stop me. Holy Spirit, like you stop you. Mm. Holy Spirit's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Holy Spirit's like, I ain't twisting your arm to do that. Mm. Nobody's twisting your arm to do that. You can stop you just like you can start you. Oh boy, <laughs> mm. help me, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Free will. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Say that. Free will. <laughs> so, do we ever consider how these options, be them kingdom or carnal, how they influence? Watch this. Your emotions, your thoughts, your feelings, or your attitude. How they influence your soul. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Mm -hmm. When you choose to cuss. Mm -hmm. When you choose to cuss. How does that influence your attitude? Mm -hmm. Your emotions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your behavior? Right. How do, when, when you cuss somebody out on the street, does that make you feel good or does it make you feel bad? As a, as, as, as a, you don't have to answer it, but you should think about it. Right, right. Because the result of the carnal option should let you know the condition of your soul. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. You got to understand that. The, 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 like, like, if you desire, like, if, if you walk into a room and somebody is watching some Christian preaching or teaching, or, or some, let me say it again. If you are watching some 
preaching or teaching on television and you walk in and see it and the first thing that goes through your mind is, I don't want to see that mess. What is the condition of your soul? Is that a kingdom mind or is that a carnal mind? Mess. Like, oh, what you watching? Oh, Jamal Bryant. Okay, that's nice. But, but 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 do you call it mess? Right, right, like, right. Th- like, like how do those things, like if you see somebody, like, like listen, look, I'm, 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 I want y'all to get this because you have to understand the value of your soul because if you don't understand the value of your soul, then you won't under, you, then you won't, then you'll make poor choices with what you allow to influence your soul and then you will mess up gaining the world and losing your soul. Mm-hmm. You have to understand the value of the life that animates the body, the emotions and the attitude and the feelings and everything that the soul is bombarded with every day. Your soul is bombarded by the problems of your family. Your soul is bombarded by the COVID-19 situation. Your soul is, your, does the COVID-19 situation impact your emotions? Does it impact your feelings? Does it impact your beliefs? Does it impact your thoughts? And how do you respond to the COVID-19? Do you make it does it make you feel like there's no hope? We're all gonna die, you know? Or, or do you, or, or do you say, God, you can work a miracle and you can sustain me, your Jehovah Rapha? How do you respond? How and how you respond? It lets you know the status of your soul. Mm, yeah. When people that you love pass away, how do you respond? Mm. It hurts for a moment. But then, if you if the reality is if they if they knew Christ, you are you have some level of peace. But if you don't believe in the Father or that there is a place for those who are the redeemed of the Lord, then you don't have any peace. Right. These things allow you to understand the status of your soul. Mm-hmm. This text, this text is informing us that the reason. A lot of times we feel lost in our emotions or we feel slaves to our feelings or in bondage to our thoughts is due to our decision to hold on to the world. Mm. And in doing so, we lose who God is designing us to be Mm. because it forces us out of that comfort zone Mm -hmm. into a new place in him. So you're holding on to the world Mm -hmm. instead of denying yourself. Listen, denying yourself the comfort of that drink, that denying yourself Mm -hmm. the comfort of that drink to knock the edge off. Mm -hmm. Denying yourself the comfort of telling somebody off to make yourself feel better. You said it. Yeah. You said it. Denying yourself, but but what you're, you're but what you're really denying yourself of is you're denying yourself of that newness of soul. Watch this, because we said that a soul, according to the Hebrew definition, the flesh means a living being or creature. Right. Second Corinthians five seventeen reads: Therefore, if any man, this is the part that gets you happy. This is the part that gets you. My leg, my leg just jumping up. Jesus, Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 reads, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Hold on. We said that the flesh meant soul. Soul means creature. 2 Corinthians said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Now, old things are passed away dead. Behold, all things are become new. So, if before I met Christ, I was a soul. Did, did y'all get that? Before I met when Jesus, when God breathed into man, he became living souls, right? So before I met Christ, I was a living creature, right? But after I met Christ, I became a new creature. I became a new soul. I became a new soul. I became a new soul. So with coming to Christ and becoming a new creature, I need to have new feelings about life. I need to have new attitudes about life. Life. I have to have new thoughts about life. I have to have new beliefs about life. I know I, I can't believe anymore that I'm an ex-convict. No, I'm a new soul. I can't believe that I'm an addict. No, I'm a new soul. I can't believe that I was born an uh, orphan or I was born no one loves me. I can't believe I'm an abuse survivor. I'm a new soul. Yes. I'm a child of the father of the universe. I'm a new soul. And because I'm a new soul, I have a new attitude about me. Right. Mm. Have a new attitude about me. 
Uh, Forget what you thought I was. You still think I'm the old creature. You still judging the person that you saw on the street. You still judging the person you saw coming out of the gentleman's club. You still talk, think you judging the person that used to visit the speakeasy. But I'm not that person no more. I am a new soul. I'm a new creature. And if you're a new soul, you have to abandon the old man at all costs. At all costs. It's going to cost you some relationships to be a new soul, but you got to believe it's going to be worth it. Because what can a man, hallelujah, use if he, what does a man profit if he gains the world and loses a new soul? It may cost you some financial gains because you can't do underhanded backstreet deals anymore because you're walking in integrity and you're walking in truth and honesty, but it's worth it. You got to be willing to understand and believe that it's worth it. It's going to cost you, but at all costs. you got to believe that the soul is worth it. It may cost you to be persecuted by your friends. That's a cost of discipleship. That's a cost to follow Christ. Listen to those who are persecuted for my sake, he says. you got to believe it's worth it. You gotta believe in the new creature, the new soul that Jesus died for you to become. It's more valuable than anything that this world could offer you. You gotta believe that the best version of you is only achievable through God the Father, through Jesus Christ. Then you must be willing to obtain the best version of you at all costs. So what's it going to cost you? What are you willing to lay down? What are you willing to deny yourself? What are you willing to give up? Better yet, what are you holding on to that is keeping you from picking up your cross? What carnal things are in your head that are blocking the kingdom thing that you are trying to obtain? What aren't you willing to drop? I want you to drop it. Make it conscious. Of your mind. Drop it at all costs. Yes. At all costs. Mm. Mm. Because the reality is, whatever it is that you're holding on to, whatever it is that you're valuing so much, whatever it is that you just can't let go of, your security blanket, your parachute, mm. that's all it is. Mm. It's a vapor. Mm. You value it so much, but it's going to cost your soul. Because your character is never going to come into the right standing. The person, the living creature that you are, that is designed to give God glory, is never going to operate in that function because you are so busy chasing fame and fortune and finances and fun that you're missing out on chasing the big F father. You got to give that stuff up at all costs. Yes. At all costs. Isaac was the promised son of Abraham. Mm -hmm. He was this promised son. And God said, give him up. He said, sacrifice him. Yeah. Abraham was willing to sacrifice his only son. Mm -hmm. He was willing to maintain his relationship with the father at all costs. Mm -hmm. At all cost. The Hebrew boys, mm -hmm. they wouldn't deny God. And they were willing to be thrown into the fiery furnace. They were willing to trust and obey God, even if it cost them their lives. Mm -hmm. At all cost. Do I have to do it? Do I do it? The lions did. At all cost. Right, right, right. Esther, mm -hmm. going before the king mm -hmm. at all cost. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every disciple of Christ except John was martyred, mm -hmm. killed in grotesque ways. Mm -hmm. Some were beheaded, some were killed by a firing squad with bows and arrows, some were crucified or crucified upside down, mm -hmm. others were thrown from pinnacles, but they didn't, it didn't matter because they were willing mm. to give up everything at all costs mm. before they were 
to lose their soul. Mm -hmm. Don't lose mm -hmm. the new creature. Mm -hmm. The new creature that, right, that you become through Christ. You become a vessel of honor. Mm -hmm. You become a vessel of glory. Because the new creature no longer looks like the fallen state of man. The new creature doesn't look like a harlot. The new creature doesn't look like a murderer. The new creature doesn't look like or behave like a thief. The new creature isn't shady. The new creature isn't running around ashamed. A new creature isn't hiding because they are still participating in activities of darkness. A new creature can walk the street at 2 o'clock in the morning boldly yes. and confidently because if anyone questions them, the new creature knows I'm out here doing right. Yes. Yes. I'm not out here in mischief. Mm -hmm. The new creature at 2 o'clock in the morning might be looking to rescue that lost person. Right. <laughs> but they... Don't worry about, the new creature doesn't worry about being scrutinized by man. Mm -hmm. The new creature doesn't worry about the judgment of man because the new creature knows that when it all comes down to the come down, they'll be found and acquitted because they are walking in the admonition and the divine instruction and the will of God. The world standard will never go above God's standard. Mm. Yes. I like Don't this. forfeit your, the, the newness of soul. The new creature that God is trying to. I, 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 I'm, I'm done. I just. But this new creature thing, this so it's, it's heavy. I remember. I think I, I might have told y'all a story before. It's probably on YouTube or one of these videos. Um, but um, we were playing basketball in my hometown, and some kids came up there. They wanted to fight. And one of them had a gun, and um, he didn't shoot anybody, but he smacked somebody in the face with it. And he knocked him out and he became unconscious. The police came and they wanted to search every. Well, my car was the only car in the parking lot and they wanted to search the car. I threw him the keys because I was a new creature. Right. Back in the day, I would not have been like, y'all got a perk, y'all got a search, y'all got a warrant? Yeah, I would have been like, illegal search. I was like, you can't go in my car. But because I'm a new creature, I wasn't worried about them finding anything because it wasn't anything to find. Right. See, 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 a new creature act different. Right, right, right. Yeah. Sir, can I have your vehicle registration insurance? Oh. Sure, hey, take it. What else? You, you want to look through here? Check the here's the ashtray. You, you wanna, you let, let me take the cushions out for you. Oh, look, there's no stash box in here. You can look for one. See, the new creature act different. The new creature got a confidence yes. in Christ. Because the new creature knows that he's in good standing with God. And if you're in good standing with God, the man, man they can man can try, they can look, they can they they they, they needle in the haystack, they won't find anything. Mm -hmm. is, 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 that, is that that the confidence that you like? Where you get mail and you can open it because mm -hmm. you know everything is in good standing? Yeah. Where the phone rings and even if it's an unknown number, you can answer it because you know what it's not. It might be a scam, mm -hmm. but it ain't somebody you owe money to. <laughs> Your new creature. Your new creature. A new creature changes your perspective. And guess what? That's not worth forfeiting. Mm -hmm. Just so you can get some quick money. Mm. Come on. Just so you can have a moment of fun that equates to a flash in the pan. You know what a flash in the pan is, right? I don't know, but I'm ready to write it down. Flash in the bedpan? Mm -hmm. <sighs> flush. That's flash in the pan. A moment that equates to that. And then it's whew, right down the drain. Flash in the pan. Talk to you something new. Don't you know yeah. them all. You like that one? Look at me like, what? I like that. Now, but what does it profit you to gain the world and lose your soul? Mm. Like, do you understand, like, when it all comes down to it, this world gets destroyed. Mm. What does it profit you to gain something that's going to be destroyed? Destroy it anyway. Right. And lose your soul. Mm. Don't lose your soul. Because your soul is what determines where you spend eternity at. I pray that y'all bless. Mm -hmm. Father God, as we prepare to dismiss for today, God, we want to first and foremost pray for these people who decided to count it not robbery and be in worship 
either physically or over the internet, Father God, we want to pray that this word challenges them to dwell, God, where they're at, Lord. Some of them may be fighting to deny anything. Some of them may have one or two things that they're still holding on to or that are still attached to them, God. Lord, let them see the value in just relinquishing it to you. And Lord, some may be struggling with what you've asked them to pick up, the cross. Some of them may, may be struggling to deal with forgiving and oh, trusting you with the results, God. Lord, we pray that you send a word, that you just allow your word to move them and understanding that none of it is worth their soul. Soul is the most important thing, Father. God, help us, your children, so that we embrace the new creatures that we are, the new souls that we are, that we can look through everything with a lens of eternity, with a carnal, pers with a kingdom perspective, God, no longer carnal, that when we look at life, we see it through the eyes of the redeemed of the Lord through your grace and your mercy, your patience and your long-suffering toward us, God, your kindness, your, your never-ending forgiveness for our foolishness, God. And just allow us to walk in gratitude and appreciation with our hands uplifted in victory that when the world sees us, they'll see change. They'll see the new soul. That they'll see a soul that's worth following, a soul that's worth emulating, a soul that looks like the Father, the glory, the grace, the love of the Father, and they will desire to get closer to that Father for themselves, mm -hmm. that you be praised and that lost be found, and that All the orphan children return back home. These things we pray. Now, Lord, we pray for healing, deliverance, breakthrough in the lives of your people. So many to name. You know who they are, Father God, and you know where our hearts are purposed at in prayer. And Lord, we pray that you move in all those places. In the name of Jesus, give us traveling mercies. Let us find our homes and our residences safe and secure. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.